I'm Jessica at Arizona Science Center, and today I'm going to teach you about ancient Egyptian mummification. So we all probably have a lot of ideas about what mummies are and what mummification is. A lot of people might think it's kind of like Brendan Fraser running around getting chased by scary mummies. But what a mummy actually is, is a preserved body. And a preserved body can happen naturally in nature. Maybe it's in some salt. Maybe it's uh, been frozen in water or high up in the mountains. Maybe it fell into a peat bog. There's different ways that bodies can be preserved naturally. But the thing with the Egyptians was that they preserved these bodies on purpose. So they did it intentionally, which might be kind of weird. Why would somebody want to keep a dead body around? Not really normal. But the ancient Egyptians did this because they believed so strongly in an afterlife, that they went somewhere after they died, that they wanted to make sure that the body was beautiful and clean and still looked alive so that the soul could find its way back into the body. So this belief system was very important to the Egyptians. They were very religious, and the entire act of mummification was a very religious experience for them. So when somebody died, their body was taken to Ibu, or the place of purification, where priests, who were knowledgeable in both anatomy and their religion, would perform the mummification. Now once here, they would lay the body out, and they would wash it with water from the Nile River. So they would just wipe it down with water from the Nile, which was a sacred river to them. It was their lifeline, their only source of water, so it was very important to them. And it was holy water. So they would wash that, and then they would, with a scalpel, they would make an incision in the left side of the body. And they did this so they can gain access to the organs inside. Why would they want to take out the organs? Well, organs are wet and sticky and they decompose really quickly. So if your goal is to preserve the body, you want to get those organs out. So they would usually start with some intestine, some lungs, just take out all the organs. And these organs were often also preserved in something called canopic jars. Here's a mini canopic jar right here. They're often much bigger. But they have some hieroglyphic script on them, head of a god, and the organs would get preserved in those and buried along with the body. So there is an organ that they did leave inside the body, and that was the heart. And they did that because the heart was the center of intelligence and emotions to the ancient Egyptians, which we know today is actually the brain. They didn't know that. They left the heart in. And what they did to the brain is they would take a hooked tool insert the hook inside the nostril and hammer it into the skull. Careful not to hurt the face. You want to get it in there. And then they would swirl it around, breaking up all the brain matter inside until they could hopefully carefully extract it through the nose. Yes, very gross. But, and the brains weren't important, so they just threw that out. So now we have a body without the organs in it, but we still need it to be dry and it's still wet inside there. So what the Egyptians used was a substance called natron. It was kind of a mix of salt and baking soda that they found naturally in their environment. So they would take a whole bunch of natron, pour it on top of the body, covering it up completely, and they would leave it for about 30 to 40 days. So we don't have that kind of time, so we're going to pretend like a cooking show. This one's already done, ready to go, dried out. At this point, the body's kind of like jerky. It's very shriveled and dried up. So we want to find a way to make it look more lifelike and smell good again. So the ancient Egyptians would often take an oil, and they would oil it up and rub it all over the body. This would make it look a little fresher and smell good. They would also take, oftentimes, sawdust, and they would stuff that sawdust inside the cavity of the body to kind of plump it up again. Right. So once they did that, we get to the most classic part of the mummification, the wrappings. So can I have my helpers come wrap with me? Come on, helpers. So wrapping, depending on your status, you got more than less. If you weren't very wealthy, you probably got a couple of wrappings. They didn't take too much time with it. If you were wealthy, you had nice material and 15 to 20 layers of wrappings. So the way you got mummified was also a status symbol. Okay, our mummy's kind of poor, not a whole lot of good wrapping going on. But while they were doing this, the priests would read prayers and religious texts over the body. And they would also insert amulets, which are religious figures that were meant to protect or to help them. So like this one, the Ankh, thank you, Ankh. 
The Ankh was a symbol of life, prosperity, hope, and that was often stuck inside the wrappings. So it's a very classic symbol. This one is the Eye of Horus. And the Eye of Horus was a big protection symbol. So that was very important for their journey into the afterlife. So now that our mummy is wrapped, they're usually placed inside tombs or pyramids, also depending on how wealthy they were. They would bring food and drink and treasures and furniture. Sometimes even mummified pets would go in these tombs with them. But what was really important to the ancient Egyptians is what happened in the afterlife to the body's soul. So for this, I will have my helpers come back up. Who wants to wear the cool crocodile hat? Hello. All right. OK. Tally, you're going to be the mummy. So you need the heart, because remember, you took the heart to the afterlife with you. And I am going to be the god Osiris. So the Egyptians believed that after death, you would travel to the halls of truth, where you would come before the god Osiris. And you would give me your heart. The heart was then weighed on the scales against the feather of truth. If your heart was balanced with or lighter than the feather, you got to go to paradise. However, if it was heavier than the feather, it was thrown to the crocodile god Amenti and swallowed up. <laughs> and you ceased to exist. Pretty terrible. Well done. <laughs> So we hope that our mummy, Annie, at the Science Center was judged well. And in a way, she has become immortal because she's still here to invoke our wonder and our inspiration about science and archaeology. So I hope you come and check her out. It's really great.